Well, welcome to the English Bubble. This is our first in a new series of sharing some information about some of the English wineries we're listing. Today we're at 100 Hills. We've got Stephen Duckett, the founder, and Richard Banfield um, coming to give some tasting uh, notes. We've got 100 Hills Chardonnay, this is the first um, tasting. We've just done a run up the vineyard. Um, Richard, what stuck with you the most from <laughs> experiencing the uh, amphitheatre? Uh, being out of breath, I think. It's the main yeah. thing. It is the steepest vineyard I've come across in, in England. But it's a, it's a fabulous site. It's, and you've got, I love the fact that you've got different angles to the slopes and quite a big difference in altitude between yes. the top yes. and the bottom as well, yeah. which gives you a lot of different material to work with, I guess. Well, this wine we're going to taste is, is from our hilltop, right, right just above yeah. where we were standing there. Uh, so it, it, as, I, as I was saying when we were talking, I mean, the strange thing about Valley Vineyards is they're warm at the top and the bottom on average, and so yeah. this is probably our warmest little parcel, and every year blind. So far, we've selected that as a candidate for our Blanc de Blanc. So this is, this is uh, the second we've released, but there are, there are many more to come. So this is just the second, and which vintage is this? 2018. 2018. A lovely vintage, a little like 22, nice and warm. And vines planted, remind me, in... in vines, vines planted in 1st of May 2014. 14, yes. Yeah, yeah in fact, this was the very first vines that went in. That was where we started all those years ago. Okay. So, gentlemen, grab a glass. So this was even higher up than where we were, just that little... That's right, just above us, yeah. And this would have yeah. been, it's like third or fourth harvest, third or fourth harvest, or...? Uh, this, this would have been the third harvest, third yeah. Harvest. And look, this is a single parcel, block to block. I mean, this is just a, a hectare of vines. We make about a few thousand bottles a year. And we've done that every year, so we're going to really explore how, you know, Chardonnay, particularly, obviously, in this case, expresses itself in different vintages in England out of the same little parcel. We do nothing differently in the winery. I mean, this is... Um, this is, a, this is a wine that comes in, we, we press, we don't fine our wines, we, there's no malolactic fermentation here. This is actually then aged a little bit in cask, a 22 hectolitre cask. Mm -hmm. for a, this, in this case, it was about two, two and a half months. It's just a hint of that, not a yeah. lot, just a hint of that toasty. And a little bit of stirring, so a little bit of batonnage. I always think batonnage uh, lends a little a softness, particularly for non-mallow wines. Uh, so a little bit of batonnage, uh, and then on the lees for 30 months before been placed in the bottle, and it's now been in the bottle for a little while as well. Okay. From tasting this previously, Richard, you've had a little pre-sample. What are you getting from it? Tremendous intensity of flavour. Initially, the, on the on the nose, really interesting because there is this sort of this, that little bit of um, oak character, but it's very very gentle. But there's also a floral character to it, a summer yes. flowers character to uh -huh. it as well. It is, I mean, for for a blonde de blanc, it does smell. Nice and ripe. Yes. You know how sometimes they can, you know, they, they can almost smell as if they're going to take the enamel off your teeth. Just a couple and of it, that really yeah. doesn't. There's an well, even even in this even in this 18, which wasn't our, our longest vintage, it's 105 days plus on the vine for these grapes, which is a long time. You can express a lot of complexity uh, with, with Chardonnay. This is Chardonnay 95 in that period of time. So yeah, a little bit of hibiscus and obviously lots of rich citrus. I always think there's a little bit of sour yeasty in there as well in a lovely way which just comes you definitely get those part. hints of pineappleiness coming through yes you know when you've toasted the pineapple yep yeah. and you get yeah. that sort of succulent yeah. um, nuss to this that's true um, so the, oak, the oak's lovely because it just does it i think it adds a spice actually it's like yes. a little spicy element and then maybe it's the lees the batonnage that you've agitated a bit yeah i think batonnage is is, is a very important uh, component in, in an english winemaker's arsenal uh, it just gives a little, a little natural softness to the wines, even mm. before you put them on leaves to, to age them in bottle. Uh, and, uh, and we think it provides a, a sort of suppleness and a. a, a I think that extends what we I would call the mouthfeel. Yep. Yeah. There's that almost widening effect, isn't yep. it? Yeah. It gives you yep. that, mm, and, that, and certainly texture. <clears throat> there's breadth, but I'm also still quite conscious of the acidity at the moment. Right. Yes. Uh, there's a real spine of acidity here. Yeah. We're not trying to hide it. You know, this yeah. is this is ripe Which, lemons and. And limes, and that's what we're looking for in this wine. In any, in any high, uh -huh. in any lovely block de blanc, I think you've got a real spine of acidity. If that's not for you, there will be some lovely other wines you'll yes. enjoy. But that, you, this or, really has. Or you could wait a few. Years. Oh, you could wait a few years. Indeed. I mean, we think this will age for a, a decade to two decades. I would, I would imagine so. Yeah. Right. There's, I mean, to my mind, it's got all the attributes of wine that could age. You can tell from the colour that it's not exactly aging fast. Yeah. And, the, and it, you know that. 
I, th I think aging of sparkling wines, it's not just about the acidity. Yes. You know, so yeah. I think sometimes mm -hmm. one's led into believing that. It's, there's, there's, you still need a substance yes. for a, sh a sparkling wine to age, a core of flavour to support that yeah, as it indeed. ages. And you know, I think one of the things that surprises people tasting this wine is it's, it's really, it's extra brute. It's five grand or so much. It's, uh, there's very little in the uh -huh. way of this sugar so you're not to, hiding to give that mouthfeel. Yeah. Mouth yeah. yeah. You have yeah. got the complexity and intensity of fruits there to really carry carry the wine with it. And I think for a long time, as you say, that's the point. Those, are, those will inevitably fade, and hopefully fade beautifully over the next decade or so. I think as this has opened up in literally only a few minutes, I'm now picking up some of that character of the vineyard. Yeah. I, I think there's quite a lot of the chalkiness coming through. Yeah, is, that, right. is that a sort of, you think it's in our... Well, we've one or two sommeliers in London who are actually decanting this for guests to right. showcase how it, how it changes with oxygen. And that's really a, so one of the things we always say on my videos is open the bottles an hour before you need them. Don't decant sparkling wine, it's a waste of time. But open the bottle early because it won't lose its bubbles, which it will do if you decant. So, yeah. um, but very much, you know, very much for us, you know, wine first and sparkling second. We're trying to make great yes. wines here. And they happen to be sparkling because for the climate we have today and the, the, the terroir we have in England, that's the best way of making, I think, very high and world class wines today. But nonetheless, still focus wine first and so as the, as the bubbles fade it should still be beautiful <laughs> but if you're going to achieve that that's <laughs> fantastic, that is fantastic <laughs> because there's so much sparkling wine that doesn't achieve that what's it's been brilliant good. today is connect the vineyard yes. which we did just a few moments ago with with now what yeah look doing. i mean you, you you both know as well as anyone great my great wines are made in vineyards not right. made in wineries in wineries we're just trying yeah. to express what we've got in the vineyard and we spent all our time all the little things we do to improve year on year we do we do a huge amount in the vineyard of course we try to make our wine making as careful as possible but that's mostly about not interfering with the beautiful complexity yeah. of the grapes that we've yeah. got in the vineyard well thank you gentlemen thank you <laughs> cheers, cheers. cheers. Thanks,